Welcome back chemists for our final video in talking about redox reactions. And we are going to focus now on balancing more difficult redox reactions in acidic and alkaline solution. At the end of this video, you should be able to balance redox reactions using the half reaction method in acidic and alkaline solution. The method for balancing half reactions can vary depending on whether the reactions are taking place in acidic or alkaline, which really just represents a basic solution. The steps for balancing an acidic solution will look very similar to what we've been doing so far. So just like we've been doing, you'll assign oxidation numbers to identify which element is oxidized, which is reduced. You'll write separate equations for the reduction and oxidation half reactions. But for each half reaction, what you'll do is you'll first balance for the element changing oxidation states. So you're going to be balancing for mass. You'll balance for all other elements with the exception of hydrogen and oxygen. Then you'll balance for oxygen with the use of water. You'll balance for hydrogen which, with the use of H+. And because that is what that actually means, right? To be balancing an acidic solution means that you have lots of H pluses floating around in solution. Then just like usual, we'll add electrons to balance for charge. And then everything else is the same. So the only the new part now is the use of H2O to balance for oxygen and the use of H plus to balance for hydrogen. As with all half reactions, you wanna make sure that you're balanced for both mass and charge. So here's an example. We're going to balance this redox reaction in acidic solution. Just like usual, we'll assign our oxidation numbers. Notice that iron goes from 2 plus to 3 plus, so that indicates a loss of electrons that's oxidized. And then manganese goes from plus 7 to plus 2, so notice that indicates a gain of electrons, so that's reduced. Our oxidation half reaction is very similar to all the half reactions we've been writing. We'll just bring down our iron, make sure we're balanced for mass, and then we'll balance for charge. For the reduction half reaction, this is one where we need to incorporate those new steps. So we're going to bring down the MnO4, 1 minus, and we're going to bring down the arrow and bring down Mn2 plus. So we want to balance first for the element changing oxidation states. So manganese is already balanced, but then we have to balance for oxygen with the use of water and balance for hydrogen with the use of H+. So notice we've got four oxygen on the left, so that means we need four waters on the right. So that way we can get our four oxygen. By adding the water, we've now incorporated H+, into this equation. So now we need to add H+, to the left-hand side. We needed to add a total of eight of them because notice 4 times 2 gives you 8. So notice it's H, 8 H pluses, and then we're balanced for mass for all of these elements. We then need to make sure we're balanced for charge by putting our electrons in. So again, notice on the left-hand side, we have it's positive 8 plus a negative 1. We have a net charge of positive 7 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have a net charge of positive 2. So that means that in order to get a net charge of positive 2 for both sides, we're going to have to add 5 electrons on the left-hand side. Notice that the electrons lost does not equal the electrons gained. So then we need to make sure that we multiply that top half reaction by 5. And then we will rewrite everything very carefully, making sure we don't miss anything. Because I didn't change anything about the reduction half reaction, I'm going to write the same thing. Putting the arrows in line make it so much easier to cancel out similar substances on either side of the arrow. And then you just rewrite everything exactly how you see. Just like we've talked about, you should be balanced for both mass and charge in this case. So now, the process for balancing an alkaline solution is virtually identical for acidic solution. The only difference now is that in alkaline solution, you don't have H pluses floating around in solution. You actually have OH minuses. So notice every step is identical, except when we get to now part three here. So we'll balance for oxygen with the use of water, balance for hydrogen with the use of H plus, 
But then because it's alkaline solution or basic solution, we've got lots of OH minuses floating around. So for every H plus that we add, you have to add the same amount of OH minus to both sides of the equation. You'll have to combine H plus and OH minus on the same side to make water and then cancel or reduce the H2Os. And then the rest of the process is identical. So let's try this example. So we'll assign oxidation numbers just like usual. We see that sulfur goes from minus two to zero, so that's gonna be oxidized. And then the chlorine goes from plus five to minus one, so that's reduced. Our oxidation half reaction looks something like this. We balance first for the element changing oxidation states. Well, that's already balanced. We would balance for oxygen with the use of water, but there's no oxygens here. We balance for hydrogen with the use of H+. So notice there is one hydrogen on the left, so that means I need one hydrogen on the right. But again, remember that this is alkaline solution or basic solution. So H plus isn't floating around in solution, it's really OH minus. So what we need to do is make sure that we add enough OH minuses to both sides for the hydrogen that we added. So that means that since we added one hydrogen on the right, we're gonna add a hydroxide on the right, and then we're gonna add a hydroxide on the left. You can combine the H plus and the OH minus to make one water. Then we'll add our electrons in to balance for charge. Notice it's neutral on the right, it's minus two on the left, so I'm going to add two electrons on the right hand side. So that takes care of our oxidation half reaction. Our reduction half reaction, I'm just going to bring everything down and follow the same exact steps. Balance first for the element changing oxidation states. So chlorine is already balanced. Balance for oxygen with the use of water. So we've got three oxygen on the left. We would need three waters on the right. Whenever we add water, we're incorporating H plus now. So that means on the left-hand side, we need a total of six H pluses. And because this is alkaline solution, for every H plus you add, you have to add OH minus to both sides. So since there's six H pluses on the left, we're gonna add six OH minuses on the left, and we're gonna add six OH minuses on the right. We'll recombine the two so that we get six waters. And then we have to add our electrons in. So notice on the left-hand side, there's a net of minus one. And on the right-hand side, be really careful here. Notice that there's minus one from the chlorine. But do you see how there's six negative ones from the hydroxide? So there's a net of minus seven on the right-hand side. So be really careful. You do have to kind of train your eyes to incorporate those coefficients. So if there's minus seven on the right, there's minus one on the left, I need to use six electrons in order to be balanced for charge. Notice that the electrons lost is not equal electrons gained. So I'm going to multiply this half reaction by three and very carefully rewrite everything so that I make sure I don't miss anything. The second equation I didn't do anything to, so I'm going to just write it down as I see there. And then I'm going to cancel identical species on either side of the arrow. So notice the electrons are going to go away. Be careful with the water. Notice there's six on the left and there's also six on the right between the two half reactions. And then also notice the hydroxides are gonna divide out too. So notice we've got three on the left and then that's gonna take from some of the six on the right. So then you wanna carefully rewrite everything. So we'll take this down and this down and this and this and this, perfect. As we've discussed, you should be balanced for both mass and charge when you have this equation written out and it looks like we are. So chances are you did this correctly. All right, chemists. The one piece of advice I can offer you here is do not, under any circumstances, deviate away from the steps. Follow the steps exactly as you see written. So make sure you have your notes out while you're doing your practice worksheet. And this stuff takes practice, but I promise you, you are going to get this and you're going to be able to do this so well. Just make sure that you put the extra time in. Thank you so much for watching.